Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. In this video, we're going to look at the winning Kaggle solution from the fall 2021 competition that I ran, where we saw how we could calculate the amount of square footage on buildings. We're going to see a solution from the one of my students presented. Heiwoo M was the the leader behind the team that presented the winning solution, and we'll see his presentation in this video. First, let me introduce the speaker. Hao M is a student at Washington University in the business school in the analytics track. He is also open to work, I see, on, the, on his LinkedIn page. He is certainly well-versed in a variety of analytics and machine learning topics, as you will see as he presents the computer vision Kaggle competition entry that he posted. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, we are we tried the team. Uh, first of all, we'd like to thank Professor Hitton for giving us the opportunity to make this presentation today. Um, but we tried for this Kaggle competition, though um, there is no secret or high-level techniques or anything. So if you are expecting this kind of things, you will be disappointed. So what we actually used were very simple techniques. So you will see this by the end of the presentation. The first thing we needed to was just to choose whether we build our own model or utilize transfer learning techniques. And we didn't really hesitate to choose a transfer learning technique because uh, these models were built by some experts and they must be better than us. And also these models are known to be effective and NIST for image classification purpose. So we tested them to see if they work for image regression as well. Um, so what we did was initial model comparison. So TensorFlow Keras provides a total 26 built-in models for image classifications. And we just tested every single one of them uh, with uh, this uh, very small image size of 128 by 128 as an input for a fast computation. Uh, this is a result of the initial model test. Uh, we recorded model name, um, epochs, and time as seconds per epoch to see how efficiently they run and the validation score. And you see, uh, there were some fluctuations in validation score. So we recorded the last, for example, for this exception model, uh, uh, one hundredth epochs validation score, we recorded them. And we also recorded how much fluctuations there were uh, in this separate column called validation score variability. So we just used very primitive technique. And we also recorded the actual submission score. But as you can see, there are not much difference between this validation score and submission score. And so we just stopped doing this by after our 10th model. If you see the number four model, the ResNFT model, uh, which is the professor's basic transfer model that he provided the code for us. And we just changed the image size from 200 556 uh, to uh, 128. And so this number four models uh, validation score became our reference. So any model that uh, gave us a lower validation score or similar validation score to this uh, became our candidate model. So for example, this exception model or VGD16 or ResNet50, 101, Inception, DenseNet, EfficientNet, these models became our candidate models. And we were also able to exclude some models because some models show uh, some inefficiency in running. Uh, for example, this efficient net B6 model took too much time for us to run. And also the, uh, some models validation score were too high over 1,000, so we were able to exclude them. What we tried next was uh, with this, our uh, candidate models, we tried uh, different uh, parameters, like uh, we tried different image input size, and we tried different up layer, meaning uh, different uh, number of nodes or uh, different uh, number of layers, and also different activation function. We also tried different epochs and steps per epoch, 
and uh, different early stopping patients and um, different training batch size and different parameters for this image data generator uh, function. And we also tried some feature engineering, uh, like uh, we tried to convert images into grayscale or uh, we just tried to enhance image brightness. And we also tried to classify images into two categories, like uh, pictures with sky or pictures without sky. And we also tried to remove outliers. Uh, I'll explain these in further detail. So what we did was just using, uh, by, by using external image batch processing utility, we, tried, we converted images into grayscale. And back then we didn't know that we could do this just by using image data generator. And, but we didn't know this. And it turned out that uh, it was a complete failure. It actually increased RMSE a lot. So we failed at this try. And we also uh, enhanced images brightness also by using this external utility. And you can do this by just using the image data generate function, but we didn't know that back then. And we thought that uh, this might give the neural network more distinction. Uh, I mean, before brightening images, pictures were quite dark and it was hard to distinguish uh, these buildings from the green background. So we thought that this might work, but it turned out to be a complete failure again. And the reason why we failed, we think, is that when we actually changed the original picture's color either to grayscale or brighter images, uh, we just ended up losing some useful information that were stored in the original picture. So actually, after this converting neural network had to process uh, with the limited input, so that's why we failed. And this, personally, I believe that this would work for sure. Uh, so I had a big expectation for this technique. Uh, what we did was to classify images into two categories, like category one, pictures with gray sky, and category two, pictures without gray sky. Um, we were able to do this just by checking the color of the very first pixel uh, of each images, uh, because uh, all sky colors are identical. Their RGB color is uh, 72, 72, 72, just so. Just by checking the very first pixel, uh, we were able to classify these pictures into two categories. So we split the data to, into two pictures with sky and pictures without sky. And we had have two uh, different test uh, set, data set, train set, test set. But there was a problem because um, there was unbalanced data size. So these pictures without sky, there were only a limited number of them. So we actually had to decrease the uh, epochs and time, no, steps per epoch uh, for our neural network to be able to train them. So this uh, gave us a little higher RMSE, so it was also a failure. This is, this is about data cleansing. Uh, uh, we noticed that the distribution of the square footage of training data set is just beautifully normal, except uh, these very first outliers. Uh, there are about 370 outliers whose uh, square footage is less than 100. So uh, we just try to remove them. Yeah, we thought that this would be a good choice because the number of these outliers were relatively small to the whole uh, number of the data set. Uh, so it would not affect the uh, neural network too much. And we thought that it would give us a better result, but it was, it was also a failure. Uh, the actual RMSE increased a bit. Yeah, so so basically we failed at, at every hour tries, like feature engineering and this data cleansing. And I'll, I'll just uh, introduce you uh, to the, our best single model. Our best, uh, our best single assumption score was achieved by this model, uh, Inception ResNet V2. And the, um, with these parameter tunings, uh, we changed image size into uh, 299 uh, times 299 
which is the inception ResNet model's original input size. And we also doubled the, doubled the up layer, uh, like from 124 to 248, but we, we didn't change the activation function here. And we also increased epochs from 100 to 200 because uh, we've seen in a lot of cases that uh, these models reached epochs at 100 max epoch without early stopping. So we thought that it might be better for us to give it uh, more epochs for the neural network to train the data well. Uh, these parameters, like steps of our epochs or early stopping patient, we tried different parameters, but it, they didn't work. So with this uh, inception resonant fit model and with only these uh, three parameter uh, tunings, we've got submission score of 465. We, without this parameter tuning and just by just choosing this inception resonant width model, the submission score was like 499. And this is what we found later during Kaggle. Um, it turned out that choosing inception resonant width model was a good uh, compromise between model accuracy and the computational cost. So the uh, y-axis is a model accuracy, x-axis is a... Uh, computational cost. So inception ResNet uh, with models right here and very few models have the uh, comparable accuracy like uh, this SC ResNet uh, 1 1 or SCNet or NASNet Large, but these two models are computationally too expensive. So we were not able to run, run them. And this SC ResNet uh, 1 1 could be our good competitor because it has a comparable uh, accuracy, but even with a, a lower computational cost, but with our image data set and with our, our test environment, it turned out that Inception ResNet uh, V2 was the, uh, the best single model uh, in our experiment. The best result we've got uh, was not achieved by a uh, single model. It was achieved by a uh, fake ensemble technique uh, so we uh, had our uh, some best predictions, like predictions under uh, uh, 500. We just took the weighted average of them. Uh, so this uh, inception resonant with model that is highlighted as yellow uh, was our best single model. So we gave it the highest weight and we gave this dense net model the lowest weight and we just took the weighted average of them and to make a submission, uh, to make a prediction. And it turned out that the weighted average worked better than just normal average or median. And by using this technique, our final submission score went down to 422. And what's worth to notice is this one. Uh, any ensemble worked better than the single best model. So which means uh, if I just randomly choose two or three models from these eight models and just took the average, take the average and make a submission, this would give us a uh, lower uh, RMSC than the best single model. So the mostly around 440 uh, submission score we were able to get. So summary here, uh, uh, our reference model, the ResNet 50, uh, uh, its submission score uh, was 768. And just by choosing the inception ResNet V2, uh, we were able to bring the score down by a seven, oh no, 35%. And with, uh, with parameter tunings, like input size, up layer, epochs, uh, the submission score went down further by 7%. And with this final ensemble, uh, fake ensemble technique, the submission score went down further by 9%. That's it. Uh, that's our presentation. And uh, thank you for listening. Yeah. All right. Are there any questions from the class? I'll let you guys go first. Yeah, uh, can we go back to the, uh, what was it? The benchmark one, the slide? Here? Oh, yeah. Uh, no. I was kind of curious. Uh, is this like conducted on the ImageNet data set? Uh, I don't know. We didn't check that, uh, but we just found out that uh, this uh, images so yeah and i mean uh if i'm not mistaken the uh curious application like the page it lists the uh 
top one, top five accuracy too. But like as you have tested that, uh, the accuracy does not uh like directly corre- uh, correlate to the performance of uh this particular problem, right? So you mean these models were tested for image comparison, right? I mean image classification. I mean we're dealing with a uh, different problem here. I'm not sure if uh, right, right. this comparison is gonna give much us much value over the or like telling us which uh, model is better than the other one. Well, I think that's a good point. Uh, I we just use these uh, pictures as a reference, um, and you made the right point. Uh, these models were pre probably tested with uh, image classification purpose, but our problem is image regression. So just uh, using these pictures as an example uh, might be wrong. Yeah, I admit, yeah. Uh, Okay, yeah, I mean, I get a point, but like, just want to clarify it. Yep, thank you. Okay, any anyone else? Well, I'll ask a couple. Um, so the brightness, when you were trying to feature engineer with the brightness, were you were you changing the brightness just uniformly across all of the images, or were you trying to get maybe all of the images to a similar brightness? I mean, how did you how did you choose what because whatever you ran is as a batch program there, it probably required you to put in some sort of a percent increase brightness by or something like that. How did, did you choose that individually or did you just increase it on all of them? Uh, I just set the uh, uh, common value for okay. all of the images. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know, I know sometimes people use techniques that, that um, they try to bring everything. So they make the dark ones more bright and the bright ones less. And I've never personally had too much, too much success with that, with that approach, uh, kind of like you're, you're describing. Um, my next question, your ensemble weights, how did you, they look very, very similar, but it looks like there's some fine tuning on there. Was that by hand or did you use some sort of machine learning technique to come up with those weights or did you derive them from the from the scores how, how did you come up with the individual weights uh calculate the weight just uh using the submission score okay uh, so we sum the submission score all of them and we use them as a denominator and uh so for example the 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 very first models here uh, uh for this uh in session resonate uh the best single models uh, weight okay uh, we, uh, we used uh, dense net uh, models uh, submission score as a numerator. So in the back order, yeah. Okay, fair. sounds good. All right. Well, congratulations on getting the top spot. That's uh, that, that's that's always impressive. Uh, you can go ahead and unshare your screen. I will move on to the next group. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you for watching this video. And if you want to follow this course, learn more about machine learning, artificial intelligence, and see my various projects in that area, please subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much.